Hey there everyone, this is Jeremy, the Music Andy, and we're here today to talk about Tana Talk 4 from Benny the Butcher. This is studio album number 9 for the East Coast rapper coming out of Buffalo, New York. We got a handful of artists and producers featured on this with Conway the Machine, J. Cole, and The Alchemist being the most notable ones on this album. This is a follow-up on Tana Talk 3, which came out in 2018 with elements of hardcore hip-hop in it and the style choice of East Coast hip-hop vibes feeding it. It had thoughts and themes about drugs, crime, introspective thoughts, which is then continued on Tana Talk 4. This album starts off hot with Johnny P's Caddy. This has a track of Benny with a flow that is very guiding throughout this with a simple boom bat beat on it. The snare is very prominent on it. The kick drum is very loose. It's very simple. It's very catchy. J. Cole absolutely tears this track up. He starts off very slow but quickly builds momentum, rapidly dashing to the finish line full of flexes. I'll probably go to hell if Jesus asks for a future. To count all my cash, you'll need a calculus teacher. These are fantastic rhymes. They're hilarious. Cole is also doing his standard of taking shots at the younger generation of rappers, saying that the only thing they talk about is lavish lifestyles, guns, drugs, yada yada. Benny on this track, like I said, is very guiding. He's very easy flowing. He's doing it very effortlessly. And he's doing it to the theme of that he's the best in the game, both on the streets and in his rap game. He is going to continue doing both, but if the opportunity was ever to present itself, getting out of the trap game is something that he would want to do. This is later established with the 10 More Commandments song later featuring Diddy. You know, he's talking about going from rags to riches, being a product of the street, saying that he's a self-made person, he's come out, he has a family around him that's very supportive, the gang around him, the people that he surrounds himself with, and he feeds them all well, and they give respect right back to him. He's a good leader, and he leads by example. Back Back featuring Steve God Cooks is a track that is just flexes all around. Uh, Benny's the best in the game, and he's going to tell you in a multitude of ways why he is the best in the game. The beat that's going on kind of has this whirling bass that feels like a mosquito is just chilling right next to your ear but it's a still pleasant thing for some reason bright flicks of keys are kind of the loop that's repeated throughout this and it's a nice contrast to the bass that's happening and then we have steve featuring on this track and honestly it's probably one of my least favorite features on this he just felt a little bit too heavy on this lighter side track and it just didn't work that well together Super Plug is my favorite track on this one, and to no surprise, uh, it has The Alchemist producing this, and I think it is the most layered, most adventurous, most just catching and pleasant track that's on this one with the beat. Those soft keys, the laid-back drums that are still commanding and very attention-grabbing at the same time, and these synths that go from in your face to just kind of creeping in the background and just very nice filler and atmosphere to the track. Benny just wants to support those that have supported him in life and the ones that he cares about. You know, you turn that one to a two, you turn that two to a three, and you turn that three to a dub, and there you go. Benny just wants to support those that matter to him in his life, those that support him, that give back to him. He's going to turn that one to a two, that two to a three, and turn that three into a dub. It's a great hook on this. The Alchemist just seems to do a good job of letting artists be introspective, a little bit more self-reflective on their lyrics and their thoughts. And I don't know why that is, but maybe it's just this really free beat that allows artists to just kind of uh, project themselves onto the canvas of the track. The next standout track for me is 10 More Commandments, and it's adding on to the list that the Notorious B.I.G. has already built upon. Some really interesting ones for me was that you should buy cars or things that have resale value because if something were to ever happen to you as a plug, as a provider, as a seller, as a distributor, uh, if a deal went wrong, you'd have no money, you could resell the things that you've bought and then you could get back on your feet and get back into the game. But I really like the point of view on the rule number 11, which is the first chance that you have to get out of the game. You absolutely take it and you don't look back when you do it. Diddy takes this a step further in saying that 
Uh, people need to stop living on the streets, stop giving to these bi businesses and start unifying and coming together. I mean, it's a great message, but some people really don't have that choice, that luxury of making that choice. And these streets is the only thing that does offer them a way of living, a way of life, a way of providing for their family. The beat on this one is also one of my favorites on this entire album. It's super it's distorted, it's very glitchy, it's got very angelic keys kind of raining off the top of the track on this one. Tyson vs. Ali is the next track and it just has a piano kind of sliding up and down, filling out the scale. It sounds nice, it's very pleasant on the beat. Benny is once again telling us that he is one of the best. This time he is kind of way backing you up. You know, somebody in the family, they're reminiscing about old times. Just again, another one of those flex tracks. Uncle Bun has a horrifying beat. This is a beat that was just kind of haunting me. It was kind of terrifying me. And then I heard 38 Special come on to this track and I was just kind of giggling and I couldn't help it. I support whatever flow any rapper wants to bring in and whatever style he wants his voice to be, but I just didn't feel like it matched with this track and it just kind of made it a little bit too comedic for me. Fowey's Revenge brings out the horns on this track and again, uh, Benny is just absolutely killing it on the flow. And it, it is something that I've noticed on this album is that the tracks that Benny is alone or he's the one more dictating the songs, Seems to be the ones with the best hooks, the best lyrics, and just the best kind of wordplay coming from him. Kind of makes me wish that there was a little bit less features on this one. I understand that we have family on this one with Conway and Westside being on that, but still the features haven't really lived up to it on this one except for J. Cole in the beginning. And Bully James's track wasn't too bad. Going back to this track though, that this is definitely one of my favorite ones on the album. It just has Benny just going off completely on the flow, and it's very engaging of a track for me to listen to. Billy Joe is a fine song. It doesn't have too much going on to it. It kind of has this old school vibe going on, you know, a track that you just throw on your car and you just kind of drive around listening to. And it has him saying that he's the best uh, dealer in the game. Even he has his family hooked on the stuff that he's selling. Guerrero has spacey keys on it, has a lot of beep boops going on in the beat, and it is one of the last super engaging tracks when it comes to the beats, the instrumental on it. Then we have our last two tracks, which I'm really not a fan of either one of these. They're not bad in any way, shape, or form. I don't really skip them when I'm listening to the album, but they don't really call out to me and they don't really have anything lyrically that's really engaging for me. It's story-based, storytelling, introspective, just more flexes going on. The beats don't really have anything too flashy going on. It has the Alchemist doing these. They can get a little bit spacious, a little bit adventurous, experimental at times, but it still isn't the best work from the Alchemist and it feels like I wanted a little bit more out of them. With Mr. Chow Hall, I wish that Benny came out with something a little bit more inspiring on the lyrics, a little bit more commanding, a little bit of tying this album together, but we really didn't get that. When this album is on, it hits right. The storytelling, the wordplay is perfect. The flows kind of make everything work together and the beats really help engage and sit you down and make you listen to the tracks. I wish that this was something that was carried out throughout the entire album, but I feel that it's only really in the first half. It is in some parts of the second half, but for the most part, it really isn't. Again, like I said, even the tracks that are bad, bad, don't really make me want to skip them. They're not really unforgettable. They're just not my favorite tracks. I'm not really one to just listen to tracks that have to do with flex upon flex upon flex, just in succession in a row. So with that being said, I'm going to give this 7.8 bricks out of 10. What did you think of this album? What albums would you like for me to review in the future? Please leave a comment below and let me know. Subscribe if you like the content, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you.